Einar, this is Captain Maxim. Welcome to the Subsim TeamSpeak server. And we've got lots of visitors you here anxious to ask you some questions. So we have some people also recording for uh, later broadcasts. Ah, that's great. Thank you so much. Hey, let's see if uh, Oscar is uh, here. Yeah, he's here now, I think. Uh, um, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Oscar, Captain Maxim here again. Welcome to the Subsim TeamSpeak server. Thank you, thank you. So if if either one of you guys are prepared for like an opening introduction, um, you can do that. Or, uh, you know, if you'd like us to start with our questions, we can do that. So what would you like to do? Yeah, well, I guess we just could we, we just say that we are Oscar and Einar, that's us. And uh, we are developing uh, Who Am I Smarulken, uh, as you know. And... Uh, we are very happy to answer all your questions, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So, so you go ahead, guys, and ask ask ahead. Well, I just wanted to thank you for pronouncing the names correctly. So it's Einar, and I was saying Einar. Sorry about that. Yeah, ex yeah, you're correct, Einar. Yeah, great. I have a question. Okay, yeah? Quack, Quack, go ahead. That was Rentical. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, so when's the next build release? Well, um, um, so uh, currently um, I'm working really hard to um, make the game um, talk to the Steam servers because, uh, as you know, we have been having uh, people are having trouble connecting, and I think that's uh, probably the most important thing to to address uh, right away. Um, so I'm uh, I'm actually be rebuilding most of the netcode, which is uh, kind of a chore. Uh, and there's also some like um, bureaucracy involved in in getting your game on Steam, so we're working on that uh, at the moment. Uh, we're also including a lot of bug fixes in the new new version, but um, I can't uh, since since uh, we plan on releasing it on Steam, I can't really give you like an exact date on when, but as soon as possible. Yeah, fair enough. Unknown at this time. Though. Yes, and uh, while Oscar is working on Steam, I, I've been uh, doing some uh, video editing the last couple of days to make, uh, for a new video, and I'm, I'm also working on uh, avatars, uh, player avatars. So hopefully we'll, we'll get that feature soon, because that's something uh, we have noticed people really, really need. So I have a question about avatars. Uh, do you intend to allow us to make customized faces? Well, um, not um, not immediately. Um, it's it, it will be quite uh, simple avatars at first, just to get it running. Uh, but then, as you might know, we have our uh, have the Kickstarter uh, pledge level where um, pledger uh, will have their face on the avatars. But then again, we are also planning on including uh, AI bots, and uh, so so there will be. Um, more avatars than just four. Uh, just to clarify, what we mean by avatars is it's not some kind of little icon. It's like a player character model. So it's uh, unless I mean, now you're invisible in game, but it's a representation of the player in game. So it's a full three D model. It's not some kind of two D graphics thing. Okay, I just wanted to mention uh, before we start asking more questions, if anybody wants to ask a question, hold your uh, blue light key down for just about a two seconds so I can see it, and I'll give uh, each person first choice, first come, first serve. If I don't see anyone, I'll ask my next question. Yeah, Black Can, go ahead. Um, I would like to know on which station you guys had planned to be ex like, be controlled by by us, like torpedo reloading and all, and all the other kind of stuff on a submarine. Well, um, the, uh, the the next thing, the next big station we, we want to add is manual navigation because um, we've had it in earlier versions of the game and, and it's really fun to, to do navigation and it um, really adds sort of depth to the game because it requires real skill to navigate. Um, and the second thing is actually manual torpedo uh, reloading. We also used to have that actually, but we removed that because we wanted to uh, get the game out. Uh, sooner. Yes, uh, I, I've um, <clears throat> we had uh, we all, we have a, a, a torpedo room uh, pretty much modeled. It's not uh, really done, but uh, the basics are there. So 
Yeah. And uh, Oscar, could you could you um, tell them a bit more about the uh, manual navigation? I mean, the station itself and what kind of instruments there will be at that station. Yeah, sure. Um, so our plan is to um, have both. Um, like you, you should be able to to navigate both by by sighting stuff on land. Um, and also by like like if if you see something on land, you can measure the angles and you can calculate where you are by drawing lines on the map. Uh, and you should also be able to use uh, dead reckoning because it'll be a um, what's it called an, an odometer. Like you can see how far you've traveled since the last time, so you can calculate like you just have to calculate where you are currently. Okay, um, so uh, a question, a question. if. If you are working on various parts of the project simultaneously, do you have some sort of a um, a way of maybe using the subsim forms? There's a thread dedicated to you now where you could say, here's the next 10 things we're working on. And next to each one, you could say, this one's 25% done, that one's 30%. So we sort of have a calendar. And then we can sort of, uh, I guess, plan our next question session to talk about things that maybe we might not ask about today. So keeping like a list of current uh, ideas you're working on, plus the future ones that have not yet started. Well, uh, I, I actually I made a, a thread uh, called Development Updates, where where I plan to um, tell you guys all about what we're doing. Uh, but since we haven't gotten that far yet, and we aren't really exactly sure how long it will take, I haven't posted any particulars uh, concerning when it will be done. But that thread is going to develop, and we will eventually post uh, things regularly in that thread. Rental cow, go ahead. Yeah, um, so kind of two parts. The first one's real quick. Like for the manual navigation, are we going to be having 3D objects on land that we can use as reference points? Yes, that's the plan. You, have, you can have uh, lighthouses and you can have, um, like if you see um, a particular um, like landmark of some kind, you, you can see it uh, through the periscope, or um, if you're standing on the submarine, you can see it in your binoculars, uh, and you can can measure the angles. Okay. Uh, uh, and then I was going to say, like, so as far as instrumentation goes, you plan on expanding, like having more types of instruments in different places, like maybe up at the control room, have a depth gauge, etc. Yes, definitely. I mean, it's it's not uh, done yet. It's, it's still in alpha, so we're we're, we're um, experimenting with, with right, right. different uh, like setups. Yes, we are also updating the uh, current uh, instruments uh, a lot. Ex especially, we have got um, we'll have um, spoken about the depth meter, uh, for example, and that and the compasses will be updated. Pretty much all uh, gauges will be updated. Blackhand, go ahead. Um, uh, it may be a really stupid question, but somehow I never really got, like, saw an answer. What kind of submarine is it, by the way? Because it, from the outside, it kind of looks like a typical German Type um, 2 or Type 7 submarine. But uh, on the inside, it's completely different and I was wondering if you have mo modeled it by a real uh, real uh, thing or if it is like something out of your mind well it's the submarine is currently pretty much uh, fictional with uh, inspiration from from different subs um, the interior is is mostly just uh, uh, fictional uh, and the the outside of the sub is well. I've, we're taking uh, a lot of inspiration from old Swedish subs from, like uh, after the the First World War, but also German subs. But yes, uh, it it is fiction at this point. Yes. Rental cow, go ahead. Oh goodness, why does this? Why do I always forget? Come back to me. Okay, so my next question then was. Um... The destroyers are currently pinging us, but the people who join your sub aren't hearing the sound. So is that a high priority for the very first release coming out? And also, along with that, will the enemy destroyers get a sonar, or what do you call it, a hydrophone, so they can hear you in all directions? Yes. I mean, uh, 
it's um, like both the, the, the fact that all of the things aren't synchronized, like there are more things that aren't synchronized yet. Um, like if you turn the, um, the hydrophone inside the sub, for instance, it's not synchronized, like two players can have completely different directions on it and so on. So some of the things aren't actually synced for all players and um, that's definitely something that we'll be fixing very soon. Also, um, stuff like um, stuff like AI, like making the AI more intelligent, because as you said, not right now they, they don't even hear you uh, at all. So that's obviously something that we should fix uh, very soon. Uh, I plan on, on having something like, um, like it should depend on how fast they're going. So if they're um, standing still, they should hear you uh, fairly well. And if they're going at maximum speed, you should be able to, uh, they shouldn't be able to hear you at all, basically. So th their hydrophone should work as, as our hydrophone does. Another question about the Kickstarter campaign came up today. Somebody suggested that the end date for the Kickstarter campaign is coming up pretty soon, and you may or may not just barely reach your goal. What happens if you don't reach your goal? Can you start another campaign? Do you understand the rules of Kickstarter? Because maybe you can explain that to us. Uh, yeah, so um, you, you're allowed to start as many Kickstarter campaigns as you want for the same project. Um, but I don't know if, if a third campaign would be good for us. I mean, we have gotten a really good response for this one, and, and uh, I'm really glad that people like our game uh, and that we've gotten out to a lot of people, we'll reach a lot of people. But um, if this fails, we will probably first try to go to, like, there are publishers that could maybe publish the game for us so we could, like, get some development money for them and from them, and then we could afford to continue developing. But that's, I mean, we can't be <laughs> counting on that actually, uh, exactly because it's its hard to get a publisher. Um, we could also release it as an early access project. Uh, and that sort of depends on how many people are interested. And also, uh, like, if, you have, if, if we have to work at the same time, uh, and, and we have to work a lot, like for someone else to, to get money for rent and so on, then we will probably not put it in um, early access because we don't want to end up in a situation where the game is in early access and nothing is happening. Like if, if we put it in early access, we want it to be uh, like a new release each week, like a new level each week or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you want, you want to maintain a constant constant presence of adding patches while you're on the Steam early access so that all the Steam players stay excited about it. So one uh, related question to the Kickstarter, if you do succeed here in the next, uh, whatever, three weeks, four weeks, whenever it ends, the uh, the money that you gain from that, is that going to be used just for you two developing or will there be a, additional developers to speed up further enhancements down the road? No, I mean, it's not a lot of, it's not a lot of money. So, um, we we won't afford to hire anyone else sadly i mean it would be awesome if we could hire um, someone to do translations for in instance to japanese and german because uh, those are two like big submarine game markets that we, we won't be able to reach uh, unless we get help yes yes uh, it, it, it's um hmm. yeah really uh, we re really like to reach out especially to the german markets but it uh, it's quite hard since we don't speak German and uh, yeah, but we um, yeah we'd appreciate all help we could get if um, some, somebody speaks German and uh, knows about forums and stuff. Yeah, as Oscar said, uh, Japanese and German, the Japanese and German markets would be really great to uh, reach out to. User in your channel is recording. Okay, so okay, I just so a new user down to our channel. We're currently talking with the Swedish developers Oscar and Einar from the HMS Marulken game, and that's how do you pronounce the studios? It's a, is it Svader? Skvader. It's it's Skvader. a hard pronunciation for Americans. Gotcha. Okay, so who has a question? Uh, Black can. I remember mine from earlier. Oh, um, okay, I'll be next. Yeah, um, have you guys given any consideration to the controls, like letting us customize them? Or because, like, right now they feel kind of clunky to me. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're going to have uh, custom key bindings and so on. But uh, do you mean like you want to not hold down the right mouse button? 
or, or yeah like um for example in pulsar you can always move around with wasd and then you hold your space bar down to interact with the controls in front of you oh yeah that's that's a good idea actually to have uh, like the reverse of what we have now so, so yeah, moving is I, default yeah i really like that a lot more and then also just moving around the sub i seem to get hung up on objects in the sub and have you thought about adding like maybe um just points where you don't get like it'll kind of funnel your your avatar through you know spot so you don't get hung up as you're trying to frantically move around under fire yeah definitely i mean um now i, I i've just added the uh, very basic like box colliders for everything so everything is a box so that's why you get stuck on corners and stuff so like, here when you run around but but we're adding yeah. uh, a, a better inside for like better colliders later so just a clarification on the mouse we might play a mission right now that lasts three hours and I have to hold the right mouse key down all the time because I'm constantly walking around the ship. So that constant holding down could be a default where you don't hold it, but the mouse will steer your camera, correct? Yes, correct. That's a, that's a good idea. Okay, Quack, go ahead. Or sorry, Black Can was up next, then Quacks. Um, basically, I have two questions and one offer. <laughs> the first question is in the engine room. This is a pretty stupid question, but it still is kind of interesting to me. There is on dial, which says RPM. That RPM kind of goes up with the depth you go. Like, the deeper you go, the higher the RPM go, um, goes, which kind of doesn't make sense to me. But is it something I don't understand, or is it a bug? <laughs> this is a bug. It's uh, mapped to the wrong value, so it's, it's just a depth meter now. Okay. It, acts, it acts like a depth meter. It's a, it's a bug. Okay, um, my second question would be, if you would su succeed your Kickstarter campaign, what would you guys think would be the hardest thing to achieve? Like, like you both work pretty hard on this project already, and I think you made a lot of experience. So what would you think would be one of the hardest things to do in the, in the developing pro pro process? So the next thing that you fix, what is the hardest thing to develop? Hmm, Would that's that a, that's Steam? a good question. The Steam networking, I was going to suggest, that's a hard thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a, I mean, it's not very hard. I know how to do it. It's just a lot of work, actually. It's, it's not uh, particularly difficult, which is basically true for most of the problems we'll be facing. I, I can't actually think of something that I, I don't know how to do right now. I, I mean, it's just a matter of putting in the hours. Yes, and, and um, uh, sorry. And all... oh, go ahead, Einar. Einar yeah, go ahead. thank you. Um, and also, um, creating uh, the the models and the interior of the submarine and and doing level design, creating levels and stuff like that. That's not really an issue. So we have pretty much solved those problems already. So that is also just a matter of time. But I, I'd say usability is always a big thing. So I was going to add about the Steam thing is that uh, the Steam offers the ability to have these little collector cards and their achievements. So when you complete a mission, you get a little reward, which is nothing more than an image on your Steam account. So all those things, are they already in the works? I mean, I hate those those things. I think they're completely pointless. I would just mm -hmm. want to make games, but I, I guess that people like them, so we'll have to make them anyway. <laughs> Well, I guess I, I meant to say is, do you have to do those? Are they required, or can you skip that if you need to shorten the amount of time on Steam and then get back to doing other things in the game world? I mean, we could, uh, we can skip that. It's not a mandatory thing to put your game on Steam. Okay, put put those on a really low priority now. The next question was, Rental Cow was asking me about modding the game. So, Rental Cow, do you have a specific yeah. question? A specific question about modding? Can we mod the current? Uh, demo mission and change it up a bit or uh, on top of that well, like when you get up when the game is further developed will we be able to create mods for it uh, currently it's pretty hard to mod it uh, I mean you're allowed to we're, we're not going to sue you if you if you try it but um, currently it's, it's pretty hard to do um, there's a thing called uh, Steamworks which um, like Steam Workshop where you could um, make like hooks into your game so it's easier for people to um, to change your game, uh, and and you can also like upload your mods or whatever through Steam, and uh, and that's something we're uh, gonna look at once we get the game on Steam, uh, like how easy it is, and 
Um, so I, I don't know how it works at the moment. So I can't really answer like if we're gonna bother with it. But if if it's good, we're definitely. I mean, I like user created content and user like mods and stuff. So if if we can make it easier for people to mod the game, we will. So that's a great question. And so the uh, the follow up uh, is there any, is there anyone that has a follow up on modding because you know. Uh, Anar and, and Oscar, you know that all the people who go to the Subsim forums have been playing the UBI Soft Company simulators uh, from Silent Hunter 3, 4, and 5 in the last, you know, 15 years. I mean, for many generations, these people have been modding, and there are so many mods out there. I was just going to say... They're we, really good modders, too. Right. And uh, so we, we would think that there's going to be a great response to that when that is in your game, if that's in your game. And uh, if, you're, if you've told me in the past that you haven't really played a lot of previous sub sims. So how did you guys get so good at, you know, designing a sub game? Where, where was your inspiration? Well, uh, we uh, actually um, we, we played Artemis. Um, if, if you guys heard of it, it's a space bridge simulator. Uh -huh. It's like Star Trek. Um, and we thought to ourselves, how could this be made better? And one of the fir first things uh, we thought about was um, like limited information, because in in Artemis you have you, you can see all of the map, like you can see all of the spaceships approaching you as soon as they spawn in. You can see them, and there's also like the, the, the interface is very simplistic. Like to find out more information about something, you click something, and then there's like a progress bar, and then you find all the information. So uh, we wanted to make a game where um, you, it's multiplayer co-op, and you're driving some kind of thing, and you have very limited information about your surroundings, and you have have to use um, have to be a little bit clever to figure out what's going on. And that's um, when we thought about making a submarine game. Yeah, that's so, that's uh, one thing, and also, I mean, I'm personally a more more in, more of a history guy than a sci-fi guy as well. So, yeah, of course, the U-boat setting is very interesting. That aspect as well. So, kind of a follow-up to the easy interface. Um, have you decided uh, or been thinking about what it would be like if your submarine game right now has some aspects that are really hard? And some that are really easy, where you could maybe make a menu option at the beginning of the game. Let's play in easy mode, or let's play in hard mode. Have you thought about th doing that so that the gauges are more realistic in hard mode, or the, the the enemy destroyers are more difficult? They you know they kill you easier, such and such. Yeah, so that's that's definitely something that we have been thinking about. Like at least two modes, um, one which is easier and one which is harder. Uh, and also, uh, you could further modify this. If, uh, as we said, we plan on adding uh, bots, so you can play with um, like uh, AI partners or AI crew members. And if you find uh, everything easy, but uh, except one particular aspect, like if you don't like to do navigation yourself, you could just put a bot in your team that does that for you. So then you can play um, and, and don't have to bother with the thing that you don't like. Rent a cow, go ahead. Um, oh boy. So I don't really even know where your damage model is at. As far as taking damage to your sub, is that going to be expanded? Like, are we going to spring leaks and have, have crew members run to the leaking spot and repair it, stuff like that? That would be cool, yeah. Uh, currently, the game is, is extremely simplistic uh, regarding damage. It's just uh, each, each unit has a number of hit points, and when the hit, po hit points run out, you die. Um, so uh, currently, it's it's very uh, computer game like, and it's not very realistic at all. Um, as I said, it's it's a matter of time. Like we know how to do it. Channel is recording. Sorry, um, continue. I just dragged somebody in. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So we know how how to do it. Like how to do a damage uh, model that's more um, like interesting. Like if, if you could have like a damage engine, if if you get hit in, hit in the rear or a, a damage propeller or um, whatever, so so we we know how to do it. It's just a matter of priority. Like, do we want to do that, or do we want some kind of other content or some other feature? Uh, but we're thinking about it definitely. Sure, yeah, because you could get like one of your two batteries destroyed or the two engine periscope. You know, I could just list off everything. But yeah, okay, cool. I've, you guys are thinking about it. That's awesome. Okay, Quack's up next. 
All right. So um, you were talking about translation earlier, and unfortunately, I can't help you with that. But um, uh, I was just thinking about how uh, I've read that apparently in programming, uh, it becomes an issue for people when they develop a program in this one in one language and then as time goes on they try to adapt it into other languages and uh because languages work differently in some cases it becomes an issue so i was just gonna like suggest to you guys that you try to maybe like look into um forums that uh are around game development in like multiple languages or talking to people from the languages you want to translate to in the future to see if there's things that you should be considering now as you develop the game further yeah that's a good idea actually um yeah that's that's a good idea so that that comes under the handle of uh localization is that right yeah internationalization and localization Okay, so um, Black Can has a question. Go ahead. Um, damn, I okay. I for I for got it. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Let me, know, let me know when you're back up. Okay. So um, uh, one other question I had, and it might jog some other people's memories too. So I had uh, spoke with Einar, or sorry, Einar and Oscar in the past uh, over emails, and I asked if um, if there would be a way to set up. Uh, in the near future, a uh, sort of a training area where you have one or two ships that are very slow or very stationary. Uh, and the second part of the question is, when will we see some sort of uh, ships other than a destroyer? Um, well, uh, so what what you're talking about is basically a training level, and it's definitely something that we've been thinking about because um, – especially once we put the game on Steam and maybe reach other people who aren't like super submarine nerds. Uh, people might be, have a really hard time uh, uh, if they have to read a lot or watch a lot of tutorials. So if we could make a, um, a tutorial level that actually leads you a bit through all the steps, that would be really, really helpful for them, I think. Uh, so we're definitely thinking about adding that fairly soon. Yeah, we we would uh, we would uh, already have done it if we had the time. Uh, we didn't, but yeah, absolutely. So just a quick follow up: if you do have a training area, and let's say the menu says, you know, do you want to spawn your sub with one, two, or three people? Hit ready, and then hit this button if you want one freighter moving at five knots or one freighter moving at ten knots. You know, so will those those kind of options also be included so that any player can actually increase the difficulty of their training area on their own and at their own speed no pun intended oh oh so you mean like more like a skirmish mode where you the player sets the rules uh of the game and then plays can i just well let me just clear i'll just clarify so let's say i want one freighter and i want to go you know have him go at five knots and then i quit that game and i start a new game and i say okay now make that same freighter go 10 knots that's basically what i'm asking well, um, I mean, of course we could set up, set it up like that. That's not really what I was thinking about when I said we wanted to make a tutorial level because um, I, I was thinking more of, of um, like, more along the lines of, of uh, more like um, someone tells you what to do and you learn all of the stations, like um, one after the other. But, but that's a good uh, idea as well, I think. Well, Captain- we- one, one second, Renica. So the reason I say I want to know ahead of time the very specific speed that I'm setting that freighter at is then when I go in to learn to use the dials, if I dial it wrong and I don't get five knots, I know that I did it wrong right away. So, okay, Renica, go ahead. Yeah, um, so kind of what you're really asking, Maxim, uh, just cut to the chase, is there a way that we can modify the current demo mission uh, file, modify it to, you know, maybe move some ships around or remove ships or and then on top of that, like, uh, w- w- would you be able to, like, create a program that could generate mission files, like a mission editor, pretty much? Well, currently, uh, it's all in binary, so uh, good luck with that. Uh, it's not reading from some, some kind of uh, easily readable file at the moment. It's, it's read, reading from um, a big binary file, so you won't be able to edit it uh, so- now. So the million dollar question is where on your list of priorities would something like uh, another mission with different kind of ships and uh, some sort of training, where would that be on your calendar? 
um, it would be like currently if, if, if we want to um, step through the things that we want to make in order first thing is of course um, steam release uh, and also like bug fixes of everything uh, like that you guys have been reporting to us <clears throat> uh, the second thing would probably be a rudimentary player versus player mode because that's something that I think a lot of people want to do and also we want to get um, some like uh, opinions in and player data about that like how, how do we balance the player versus player combat because I have no idea uh, on, on what kind of uh, tactics would people will come up with so that's a good thing to get um, to get into position early um, then after uh, those things works we'll probably want to add um, like more features to the submarine um, but somewhere somewhere uh, like it, when the PvP is working and um, we have like manual navigation I think somewhere there pro we'll probably add a uh, tutorial level uh, a proper tutorial level all right very good we have a few more people who had their light pressure lights again chemicals up next so uh, asking about the PvP, uh, I know that in history there was only one uh, incident where a British submarine sang a um, U-boat. How are you guys going to um, solve that? You would have to get some kind of guided torpedoes, maybe? Uh, no, we're probably going to have um, active sonar, so you, like on the submarine, so, so you'd listen in uh, after someone. And then when you think you're, you, you know, like, like when you know their, their direction and other like stats the, that you can guess from just passively listening, then you could ping them and find the distance and quickly fire off a shot. But I don't know how well this will work. We might have to do something a bit more extreme than that. Um, the the th second thing I want to add is that uh, the PvP mode, like player versus player mode, won't be just like you spawn in a bunch of subs and it's just a blank ocean because then you won't be really motivated to move anywhere because the, the one who moves will be the one who, who gets shot, right? So you'll have to have objectives, like um, someone has to defend like a convoy or something and the other person attacks or something like that. Oh, made me think of something. How about decoys? Is that something in your plan? Uh, it's not really high up on the priorities list. I have read uh, about decoys, both like... Um, so, like uh, sonar decoys and uh, like other kinds of decoys that they use, but um, I'm not sure. Like um, it would be interesting for the player versus player combat, definitely. But yeah, maybe. Okay, Black Can has a question. Yeah, I have remembered it. Um, a a lot of the guys and players on subsim are from different kind of like like they play subsim for different kind of reasons. So we have really hardcore sub simmers and we have some casual sub simmers and all this kind of stuff so what do you want to make with the game to make it use use able for new players and also satisfy older sub simmers who are who know a lot of things already so well, that's um why, why, why we ent in, uh, intend to have um a hardcore mode and the sort of casual mode. The casual mode won't be super casual, but it will still, will still be easier than the like serious mode or difficult mode or hard mode. Uh, so, so we'll have different game modes with different um, difficulty. Um, I really want to add manual um, Morse, for instance. Like, it, like you, you just push the, the key to, to send and release. Like now, right now, you press press the letter and it sends the letter. But I want to have like manual more and like more yeah, hard awesome stuff. Difficulty. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're also adding, uh, as I said, we're also adding AI partners or AI crew members. So if it's something that you find difficult, you could put an AI um, guy at it, and and they'll just take care of it. Uh, so that way, it's also easier for new players to play. Yes, a lot of people are talking about uh, single player, and the AI will or to that, I, I believe. Yeah. Okay, Chemical, did you have another question? Yes. Uh, regarding AI, uh, we'll be able to manage them, or as a player, can I just step into the station that's being manned by AI, take it over, and then, you know, get away from it, let AI continue doing whatever it's doing there? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you'll have, then, an, an, like, an order menu 
that, that you can order um, an AI a crew member to man a station. And depending on what kind of station it is, you can give it different orders. So if it's um, the most obvious is, is of course, the, um, the engine room. Yeah, like you can ask the engine room to change the course or you can ask it to uh, do something else. And you can also like just go there and, and just take over if you want and then just go away and it will continue. So that's the idea. Okay, Leo is, uh, he just came in recently. Uh, Leo, you just need to touch your uh, blue key for a moment when you have a question, and I'll give you a chance now. It's your turn. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I have a question regarding the difficulty. Uh, it sounds like what you intend to do with the difficulty is have a casual and have a hardcore mode. Um, yeah. I know with uh, Silent Hunter series, at least, actually even Dangerous Waters does this as well, is instead of having, like, a set easy medium hard mode it actually well actually does have the presets but in regards to difficulty you can actually turn on key features independently of one another so instead of having set hard medium easy you could have say an option for manual um morse code or uh like yeah you can, that's what i wanted to say too good call yeah so you can tune the difficulty precisely to what to the challenge you would like. So say casual is too easy, but then hardcore is too much. You can, you know, instead just t uh, tweak each individual value to what you would like. Like, uh, is that something you'd consider doing as well instead of, instead of having a set casual or set hardcore? Well, it's, um, I, I know that's the way that um, uh, Silent Hunter works. And I know that's <laughs> people, w w I knew people would ask for it, but um, a point about this is that if you want to do matchmaking on Steam, for instance, uh, the way that works is that you, you, you choose um, some time settings time. and then you, um, you, the Steam tries to, start, tries to find the server that has those exact settings. So the more settings you could set, the, the less of a chance that you'll hit the mark. Um, so then you'll have to... Um, have some kind of option to allow, like allow any or something like that for, for those fields for, for uh, the matchmaking to work properly. Yeah, I, yeah, I see what you mean um, in regards to multiplayer, because I didn't consider that either with the PvP or... Um, that's another thing too, is if you have just rooms or lobbies, if you will, you know, people could see what settings they're using and then say, oh yeah, I'd like, you know, that works well enough for me or ah, they're playing too hardcore or too easy or something like that. I guess that's another thing. Uh, that could be considered. But it's a great idea for whenever you're in single player mode, setting your you know settings up so you can create your own kind of a uh, play style at your own pace. I think uh, I think the quack had the next question, and then chemical after that. Okay, so um, uh, you were talking earlier about having a development calendar calendar on um the subsim or. Uh, in general, and then uh, Maxim was saying that we could use the subsim forms for that. Um, but my question is whether you plan to maybe ex uh, expand the website that you have set up right now and potentially add some sort of development calendar onto that. Because my concern is that if we were just put it on subsim forms, that uh, the other communities that are involved with uh, that are like getting into HMS Marukan. Like, I know there's one, Anrop, and a few others, I think, um, would be able to, I don't know if they'd be able to access it very well if it was just on subsim forms. So, yeah, promote, that's, promote, promote everywhere. Yeah, that's definitely a point. Um, yeah, uh, I, I don't know how many, um, how many visitors we have to our site. Um, I, I haven't really made the, an effort to make some kind of counter or something, but I doubt we have many visitors that come into our site and just look. I mean, the, people go to the site to download the demo once and then they never visit again. So we'll probably have to have, um, yeah, we'll probably have to have have several forums active. So we'll post the same information on the Subsim forum and on the, the Facebook page and on various like sources. We could, yes. of, of course, pu publish yes. it on our site as well, but um, I don't think the number of uh, like spontaneous uh, visits are very high. No, but Steam, uh, Steam is very important as well, so we we'll probably yeah. have a lot on Steam. Yeah, that's that's true. We we'll, like um, the Steam page; you can publish information about the updates and so on. So that will be probably probably the biggest source of of um, 
like the the most people will where the most people will will uh, view it so i have a complaint i've been playing your game for 7 to 10 days nonstop and i didn't even see the announcement on the forums today that you were going to be on team speak tonight until uncle neil called me on the phone and said are you ready for tonight so what we need is we need a uh, uh, uncle neil to set up an email list and he needs to email people out whenever you know, uh, Scavater Studios has a new announcement. And of course, now the banner says you're going to come back on TeenSpeak June 14th. So we now have a two week notice and I'll be ready for that. And that's why we're also recording this session is so that we can give it to whoever wants to upload it to any other site. So we're going to upload this audio to the Subsim YouTube channel. It'll be on my YouTube channel. We can forward a copy over to uh, Oscar and Anar, anyone who wants to request it afterwards. Uh, it's available. So before we go uh, too long, I know it's late for you guys. If uh, you have more time and you want to stay and answer more questions, I'm sure these guys will have more for you. Uh, if not, if you want to set a limit to it, give us a little heads up notice so that we can get the most important questions in before you have to go. Absolutely. That's a very good point. We have to work on our PR uh, a bit more, but but yeah, absolutely. Uh, for, um, hopefully, June 14th will be a bit better since like uh, in two weeks time and we'll reach out to more people yeah so like i said i was playing your game nonstop, and i completely forgot to go look i was having a good time so we found a new bug last night and uh would you like a bug report right here live on the team speak channel go ahead so several of us were at 80 meters depth i think it was rent a cow and myself and we decided to start firing torpedoes at 30 meters and we kept going down and they kept firing all the way down. So we also put the sub on the ground, the ocean floor, and fired one. And we told the torpedo, we were at 93 meters, we told the torpedo to go down to 200. And so it immediately started diving when it left the sub, exploded in front of us at close range and killed us. There's a couple of things that we just discovered. What about the the uh, the ballast, the, the, ballast the, the buoyancy tanks at default on okay, the surface? Okay, so let, let's let see if Oscar or Anar want to respond to the, the torpedo thing. So do you have a a reason to uh, add like a more realistic depth where torpedoes cannot fire? Or are you going to do that? Well, um, the um, the reason we can fire torpedoes at any depth, uh, like you can fire them, <laughs> you can fire them from the surface going down, or you can fire them, fire them from very uh, low depths uh, going up. Uh, the reason we have that is uh, because of player versus player combat. Um, so it's it's more of a like if if you don't want to be realistic, that's probably not that probably wouldn't work at all. Well, I think um, historically a lot of submarine simulations stop you after thirty meters of depth. But I would like a destroyer at some point that I could uh, run the destroyer and hunt the submarines, and I'd like my torpedoes to go down. Uh, I don't know how far down the torpedoes could go, but I, I think in the uh, majority of the sims, the torpedoes couldn't fire unless they came up to 30 meters depth or higher. So uh, the second question then was, the other day we were testing the ability to stay on the surface. And if you're in engineering, you have the left lever down, the right lever up, and that is st stable or stability. But if you go to the surface and then put those levers in the stable position, you will sink. So it does not keep you stable when you're on the surface. Uh, so you have to keep both levers up when you're on the service at the way the the game is currently. Do you have any comments on that? <laughs> well, uh, that depends on our um, buoyancy model um, more than any like conscious decision. Uh, <laughs> so uh, currently, uh, the ocean is modeled um, using Fourier transforms, and we sample the Fourier transforms to look for uh, the depth of the waves. So we have a number of sample points during, uh, like, uh, along the submarine, and then we have uh, you calculate a uh, uh, a sphere, and then you see how much of the sphere is below the surface, um, and then you um, like push upwards accordingly, like depending on how much uh, lift the the each of the points have, and each of the points can have. Different, a different amount of lift depending on how much, um, like, like depending on how much air there is in the tanks. So that's how we simulate buoyancy. So um, there are actually more um, more possibilities of, of changing the buoyancy than we currently have in the game. We have uh, ballast tanks and uh, uh, planes, like the, the, the rudders, what do you call them, planes, 
that you can use to sync and and uh, uh, dive planes. Yeah, dive planes. Sorry. Um, so um, we have. Oh, go ahead. Finish. Go ahead. Yeah. So so uh, the reason it works uh, the way it does is mostly um, because it does. <laughs> I mean, it's um, yeah. Work work in progress. Say that. Okay, very good. Um, and next question, anybody have one rent a cow coming up? Go ahead. Yeah, um, are you, do you think you could add the ability to like drift after you cut the throttle for this, the classic submarine tactics sprint and drift? Hey, wake up. Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, all the all of the um, basically all of the handling of the submarine is is um, very much work in progress. Uh, for instance, um, I think uh, it was it was you, Maxim, that pointed out that you can drive backwards at the same speed as you can go forwards. So that's just crazy. I mean, there's lots of these um, things with the physics that's not uh, really done yet. Um, but but uh, having like um, having the submarine have more momentum and so on, it's basically just a matter of balancing, um, which we will be doing more of as the developments go development goes forward. But the uh, the buoyancy bit is actually uh very tricky to do um it, it's it's even if you use like if, if you go and look at the, the correct models like how it actually works in in um in the literature it's almost impossible to to make a simulation that's realistic uh drag is, is almost impossible to calculate it's really really expensive and there's there's no like there's all of all of these constants that you basically have to fill in to to sort of make it kind of work uh, so it's um it's not an easy problem uh drag well you guys have given us a very scientific answer on that four-year curves and the sphere and the whole thing that was way over my head i hate mathematics so uh, i want to congratulate you on a great job so far this this game has attracted a lot of attention these people are in there they're multi-crewing a multiplayer game world and that is the very first time that's ever happened. I think Gator had a question. I've got more questions. Uh, Gator, are you ready? No, I didn't. No, okay. you covered it. I and think Leo. I got Leo one more real quick. Okay, Leo's up next, then Renical. Okay, um, actually I have a, do have a couple of bugs, but another thing uh, I wanted to mention too is do you plan on having the ability to actually turn off the uh, torpedo data computer? Like, so if you like turn it off, like the torpedo would just run... Uh, in a straight line, and then detonate whatever it happens to hit, you know, whether it's magnetic influence or contact detonation. That's a good idea. Um, we also, uh, I, I mean, we'll be thinking about uh, various torpedo settings that you could have. If it's, um, I, we haven't really decided what kind of torpedoes it is we're shooting, but if you, um, if you have an electric torpedo, you, could, you should be able to set the, the speed of the tor torpedo and other things as well. So, but yeah, turning the um, torpedo data computer off would be an interesting choice because then you can use it more aggressively and not, um, if, if you don't want to do calculations, if you just want to fire forward. And yeah, rent is... Oh, sorry, Leo, finish up. Oh, um, I would say too, I'm not sure if anyone mentioned this, but I noticed the deck, when you happen to get a deck gun kill, the target that you actually just destroyed just completely disappears instead of you know breaking apart and sinking yep i know i know that's um that's a thing <laughs> <laughs> and okay, uh so great graphics are in the plans that was the, the translated answer <laughs> yeah yeah i figured it was i was just hoping you guys or making sure you guys knew but i figured it would would be a work in progress type of deal user entered your okay channel. rent a cow go ahead yeah, uh, so to make the TDC a little easier to use, do you think there could be like lock buttons so you can hold values with by clicking the lock button and then because uh, that, that that would be really useful. I don't know what you think about that. Uh, what do you mean by lock? I mean currently, if you if you're standing still and if you haven't set a speed, the all of the values will be still. But if you, I, I mean, if you would be able to lock the um, for instance, the angle angle on bow or um, the angle, then it would be incorrect because the right. you target need is to moving. unlock it. But I'm saying just while you are figuring a solution, say you give his range, you can anticipate his range a little bit, put in the earlier range, and then lock it. 
once he hits oh. that range as you're doing other things, you unlock it so you have a more accurate solution. Oh, that's um, that's an interesting idea, actually. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's something you kind of do in Dangerous Waters has target motion analysis, and so it follows, you know, your own sub's motion as well, and so you do have to lock values while you're working on those things. Okay, Chemical has a question. Yes, uh, first question I have is, will there be any other submarines in the game in the future? And how big is going and open is going to be the world? And again, we'll be able to just go any way I want? Um, so the first question, is there going to be other submarines? Yes, we plan on making other submarines. Uh, but that's um, um, mostly a question about uh, the look and also like the, the like stats, like how fast it's going and so on. You can, you can make other submarines. Uh, but I don't think we have the time to like model a completely different inside of the submarine uh, because that's extremely time consuming. Uh, the other question, um, I'm sorry, what was the other question? Uh, how big and open is going to be the world in the game? Will I be able to basically travel anywhere I want with a submarine? So um, currently, we're using. Currently, no, basically, no. We're we're, uh, we're making um, fairly small maps uh, with um, with like you, you go go to a mission and then you're basically tel teleported to uh, the map and then you uh, just have that map and the world basically has a, an end to it. Um, we haven't really been thinking about making, I know it's, it worked like that in, in um, Silent Hunter and so on, that you could travel anywhere, but we didn't think it was worth it. Um, I mean, it, it, I, I know we could do it, but it will take a lot of time to do it, and since this is a real-time game, I don't think there's much of a point to be able to travel from Sweden to Germany by submarine, because it would just <laughs> take forever because we're doing it in real time anyway, so I don't think it would be worth it to do it. Okay, uh, Leo sent me a PM message to ease up, and then Quack will be after that. Do uh, you still have a question, Leo? Uh, yeah, actually, I came up with another, another thing for the torpedo data computer. Um, when it comes to the target angle, I've, I've been discussing with other people, and uh, we think it'd be nice to be able to have a setting on the torpedo data computer in which we could slave the target angle to the current periscope heading. Like, say, if the periscope is, uh, say, at compass heading 80, then the target angle would automatically track to 80 degrees, like it would match up automatically. Yeah, I have been thinking about that. Um, I don't know how realistic that is, but it's it's definitely um, worth worth uh, thinking about. Yeah, if I can say something really quick, I think it would be easy to just put a button on a periscope to basically send the periscope direction to the TDC. Actually, so, I like that. I like that so, idea. So what you guys are talking about is something more of a computerized, modern, electronic, you know, push, fire, and forget type submarine. And I think the the idea of a historical World War II theme is to avoid too many push buttons, but leave that up to the devs. Uh, Quack, you're up next. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit related to modding. Um, you were talking about you haven't really considered modding support all that much, so I'm not sure how well you'll be able to answer this question. But I was thinking about... Um, I had the idea, and I think that other people would come up with ideas like similar to this sort of thing, uh, where like my idea was to basically be able to create a little like computer that you or something that you plug into your computer and then somehow be able to um, feed information from that computer directly into the game and have it act off of that as if you had inputted it normally. So like the idea that I had was. Uh, an external um, uh, chemical just said tablet support, support for instruments. Um, that'd be like so that sort of thing. My idea was to have a uh, external Enigma machine that would automatically somehow input and maybe uh, transmit the um, the stuff that you type in in uh, ciphered. But I don't know if that would be historically accurate again. But like chemical said, tablet support for instruments would be a good idea. 
That's a really interesting question. I don't know how many people uh, would be interested in doing that. I mean, it's it's uh, it would be really really fun if you would to, were to make um, like custom controllers that could put up and like build your own submarine in your home and so on. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it probably wouldn't be very hard to make hooks into the game that you could actually control everything from any position. Um, I, I guess if if people want that, we could put it in. That's a that's yeah. actually a, a great question. There's a lot of people out there that actually design a real physical 3D cockpit for their flight simulator in their house. They actually they build the cockpit around their you know their their computer chair. Okay, so uh, push your blue light if anyone has a question. In case you just arrived, uh, Renica is up next. Okay, um, can we get an azimuth readout on the periscope display? Because, I mean, for gameplay purposes, frankly, just the disconnect between the periscope view and the 3D view inside the sub is just too much. Like, I tried it today. It's it's almost impossible. Yes, um, we're. I, I have actually already put in um, put that in. So, so um, Oh, thank it's... goodness. I mean, that's all I needed to know. That's actually okay. also a feature we had earlier, but removed. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. So a uh, a numerical system inside the view of the periscope once you're zoomed in. Um, so the other thing oh. that makes the, that that is like a gator. You'll be up next. So the, one of the things that's missing right now is most of the crew members they don't feel the danger of the approaching ping. So I'm hoping that'll be in your first patch release, uh, Leo. Or sorry, Gator. You're up next. Yes. Also, if you could put a, uh, inside with the sonar uh, display, if there was a, or not the sonar, but the hydrophone, um, you've got right now, it, it always shows the true heading. And if you could put a relative heading uh, as well, either inside or outside of the, the true heading, um, actually, you could make the true heading rotate like it does now, and then the relative heading would be st- would never would never change. Yeah, that's um, a thing we've been thinking about. Um, actually, I've been, I've been thinking about if you, if we should maybe remove most of the periscope stuff and have mostly like relative headings uh, overall, because that's that would be mu- much more realistic. I mean, and um, right. It, and it's actually easier to do the math if you have the relative heading as opposed to the, the true. So yeah. I, I was thinking that most World War II subs had both numerical systems in the periscope and you used the one that you needed. I don't think that was an advanced feature, right? Uh, that's, well, the, maybe so with the periscope. Use Again, I was a surface sailor, not a submarine sailor. But on the surface, uh, most, uh, most everything is... Uh, Relative, and there are a few things that also have the true show the true heading, but mostly it's uh, people like uh, quartermasters and operations specialists who are and uh, deck officers who are more concerned with the true heading as opposed to the relative heading. Any comment there on the devs? Yeah, um, the, the reason we uh, um, chose to have um, only um, True heading was because we thought it would, we, it would be uh, confusing for the players if we had two coordinate systems that we worked in. Uh, but I, I know it's much more uh, realistic to have um, mostly relative headings because um, because par- um, compasses aren't that exact. Um, so yeah, and they're and they're ha- they're hard to maintain. Yeah, yeah, definitely, um, especially if you're. Um, Inside a large metal craft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know, I have, uh, the, the, the generates the display, a magnetic field. The displays could have both relative and true at the same time, for the most part, I think. Okay, guys, let's let's uh, ask the devs one more time. If you guys still have time to answer questions, we can continue going. I want to make sure that we're not keeping you up too late. No, go ahead. I got one. Okay, hold rental cow will be up next. So I've been waiting to ask this question. In the engineering room, can you add a control that allows you to, or I should say most submarine sims have the the steering and the dive plane at the front of the ship. So could you tell us a little bit about why you put the steering at the rear and the lever, which says either, you know, go forward in reverse and the other lever is throttle, but there's no re- real lever for uh well i guess i should say there is a ballast lever but some people have asked for a lever 
for dive plane control to be next to the steering, and maybe the two levers that you currently have could be modified. Uh, is that something that you're interested in doing, adding a dive plane control? As I said, uh, we already had a dive plane control, but we removed it because uh, I thought that it would be too difficult for people to control. Um, once we get um, more difficulty levels in the game, then we'll definitely add it back because I've already modeled it. It already works. I'm sorry. I thought maybe you were talking about the torpedo room earlier when I heard you say we already had it and then we removed it. So if yeah, that, you... that, uh, uh, That's true as well. Yes, it is. And so, so if the torpedo room will be in the forward part of the sub, I'm assuming, and will the steering in the current sub remain in the rear? Uh, is that something that you may be changing to put more forward? Because right now when I'm training someone, I have to tell them, hey, you're facing the rear of the sub, but when you steer the wheel to the right, the sub will go to the right. So it's a little confusing that they're facing backwards. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, yeah, no. Um, I know it's it's uh, weird, but it's uh, <laughs> I don't know how to make it better. Um, like I know that it's not really realistic to control all these things from one place. Um, like depending on what kind of sub you have, um, but uh, like the the planes, like the um, dive planes uh, are actually. In, in many submarines are controlled completely separately from all other other steering uh, and so Correct. on but so the, the reason everything is in one place is to make the game playable with just four players uh, but the reason the <laughs> like you're facing backwards that's was like a matter of space I guess we could uh, I, I guess we could change that it's just I a thought it's just a thought okay so chemical killer up next hey what about me? Oh. So sorry, basically, Rental. sorry, maybe sorry, sorry Rental, we'll get you next. Just a small suggestion: um, Is it possible to put a small, small view window in the game so other players can see what the captain sees through the periscope? Um, yeah, it's possible, definitely. Uh, but again, it's it's um, we want to basically force people to communicate with each other. I mean, the the more we do stuff like. Uh, like the one th thing that Leo suggested, like you could transfer stuff directly from the torpedo da data computer, or you could look and see what everyone, what everyone else is seeing and so on. The more of these things that we add in, the less players have to talk to each other, and the more they can just play independently. And I think ultimately it, uh, it, the game might suffer from, from those uh, kind of th kinds of things. Okay. Very cool. Rental Cal, you're up. Yeah, um, is any chance of like letting allowing more than four players on higher difficulty with more complex stations, allowing like maybe eight, eight players in a sub if you really got that, that many friends? Well, um, I guess, but again, if, if you want to make it balanced for something like player versus player uh, combat, we really have to sort of have some kind of standard to how many players are on the submarine. Um, also, like if you have eight players on a single sub, then you would have to expand the numbers of number of things you have to do, because I mean, eight players—that's a lot. Uh, what, what would the, the eighth player do? Okay, so we had a question come in from uh, Tech, and his microphone is currently muted, so I can uh, I can. Answer, sorry, I can ask the question for him because he's got background noise. So his question is, for controlling the sub, can we get access support? Like, I have a yoke for flight sims. Could I use that for dive planes and or rudder control? Um, a, a yoke? Uh, I mean, like a... Joystick, yoke? Like oh, a joystick. Yeah, right, right. Oh, uh, yeah, that's oh, steering that would be wheel. possible, um, I guess. Yeah, we, we okay. could do that. So if you could add X joystick uh, and allow me to suggest what something is so important. Have anyone here ever tried virtual reality like uh, Track IR? So Track IR allows you to look around with your head while you're walking in the sub. If you could enable that, it would be awesome. Yeah, that's uh, one of our stretch goals on, on the Kickstarter. We would like to add the support for Oculus Rift, maybe even HTC Vive. So yeah, uh, 
What, go, sorry. go ahead, Axum. I'll just finish up. So was track IR also on the stretch goals, or did you never hear of that track IR? Were you aware of it? Are you no. you know the company? Nope, no, I haven't uh I have haven't uh been in contact at all or heard of uh track IR. Okay, so just please write this down, naturalpoint.com, and you can talk to them immediately. I'll give you more info later if you need it. Okay, yeah, sure. So, so okay, who had the next question? Chemical, go ahead. So talking about um, virtual reality, any uh, hopes for VR helmet support like uh, HTC Vive? Yeah, um, if if we get enough money, sure, definitely. I mean, we have um, we we've both tried the HTC Vive, and it's fantastic. It's uh, it's like you're there. It's I yeah. mean, you can't explain it, and it's perfect for our game because the, you have the controllers so you could actually walk up to like um, a steering wheel or a lever and just reach out with your hand and pull it. It would be so cool. Uh, so definitely if, uh, it, if we get enough money to, to invest in the, in the hardware, basically we'll, we'll add support for it. Yes. Uh, the, this game is pretty much perfect for uh, the, the uh, vibe. I think it'd be awesome with any kind of VR. So yeah, Quack, you're up next. Uh, this should be a just fairly quick question. Just out of curiosity, um, why did you? Uh, I'm not like making any judgments, obviously. Why did you put the uh, Oculus Rift at as the first stretch stretch goal as opposed to the Vive? Is because the Vive is harder to develop for. Yeah, the the Vive will be harder to implement. Like the Oculus Rift is just a headset, right? So then you'll just have to map the camera motion to the head motion and then you're done so the implementation should be extremely easy um with while with the vibe you have these uh, controllers and you can walk around in the room and so on so there's uh, yeah. more stuff that you have to implement basically rift is also cheaper yeah the rift is also cheaper and it will probably be more popular in the end and also um if we implement stuff for the uh the Rift, it will actually work for the Vive, uh, like ex ex with the exception of the uh, controllers, you still have to sit at your computer, but it, like, if you develop something for the Rift, it works for the Vive, but not the other way around. Awesome. Okay. Um, another question by anyone? Just tap your blue light if you do. Very, have a really quick. Go ahead, Renekal. Uh, I This is just kind of bugging me, and I'm sure you guys are already right on top of it but are the radios meant to work underwater so, or no um well that's another thing um about difficulty i know that radio the radio won't work underwater um we have actually been discussing that um from the beginning i mean there are there are you can send radio to submarines if you send at a really low frequency um but then you well, need, yeah. a, need a uh, really long mast, so you can send from land to the submarine, but the submarine can't reply. Uh, oh, but right. normal, normally, radio uh, sent from other ships will, of course, uh, not be be received if you are underwater. So that that's a thing that we also kept in for um, like simplicity's sake, like for the user, like so they yeah. could uh, could play so, more easily. Yeah. All right. So. The subs, you know, they have, they can also, you know, get a radio antenna up on the periscope and then, or they can load a wire up to the surface from pretty deep. Yeah, I know that too. Uh, so that will definitely be, be in the, the um, like hardcore or more difficult version um, that you'd have to do that. Um, but it's also a matter of, of, of course, implementing some kind of radio mass that you can send up or down or, or various means of sending radio and receiving radio while you're um, not uh, surfaced. Uh, but yeah, definitely, we have thought about it and we will do stuff about it. Cool, thanks. Also, okay. I, I mean, uh, could I add something more? Yes. Um, uh, the um, hydrophone, you can use the hydrophone while you're surfaced. And we know also know that that's not how it works. The hydrophone is also actually mounted on a shaft on top of the submarine, so you, sh you wouldn't be able to use the hydrophone while surfaced. So we, we know that too. <laughs> okay, awesome. So um, maybe this question will jog a lot more questions from the other people. But when you do player versus player, 
Uh, what are your priorities? Will you give people the ability to run a convoy and run the escort ship or run the planes? In other words, to patrol the area and dive and attack. The current planes in the game don't attack at all, do they? They just report? Yeah, they do. Um, that's, uh, th there's, there's two reasons for that. Mostly, uh, the first reason is, of course, it's easier to implement planes that just drive around and don't have to attack. Uh, and the, so, so we do that first. And the second reason is that it, it, we thought it would be too difficult if the planes uh, could bomb you and uh, like if they were accurate. Um, so we th thought it would be like uh, the first level should introduce the player to the game a little, a li uh, like it, should be, it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah, absolutely. So the follow-up question is, if they could, um, well, let me, let me restate the question. So currently, do the planes detect you only if you surface or can they see your when you're at periscope up only, like periscope depth? Yeah, they can see you both on uh, top depth and uh, on the surface. Well, is that detection because you're in motion leaving a periscope trail of water? Or is it because, will will they detect you if you're at full stop periscope? Um, that should, I mean, realistically, that should depend on the lighting conditions and the angle that they're, they're viewing you at. Because if, if it's mm -hmm. in the daytime, they should be able to see um, a dark um, kind of silhouette if they view you from above. So they should mm. be able to see you, even if you're st stationary, depending on the weather and so on. So if we could get to the second part of the question, player versus player, what are your priorities um, for controlling surface ships, convoys, and planes? It, will those things happen? Well, this is something we have discussed for a very long time. Uh, and of course, it would be really neat to have controllable destroyers and planes and such. But of course, it's... Um, a matter of uh, resources and time. It would take uh, a lot of time to implement that. Yeah, we have thought about it. Right. This is that's something that really excites me is to have both surface, uh, you know, um, military planes and ships hunting for subs. Who has a question? Anybody else have a light? Have a light. Okay, Uncle Neil has a light up. Yes, I do. I uh, think there's a lot of good questions here. I learned a lot from this. I do have one question I don't think has been covered, and that is the periscope. Currently, it stays up all the time. Do you uh, see the point where we're going to have it where we lower it to keep from being sighted? Again, that's a thing that we used to have but didn't implement. <laughs> in like in, We didn't include it in this uh, version because we wanted to uh, finish as soon as possible. It, we did have it, but, but it was a bit buggy, so we chose to to remove it completely uh, to get a release out faster, basically. But yes, we, we have <laughs> we have planned for that. Uh, actually, we had it working for a while, at least. There was okay. another one. Right. Keep going, Uncle. Uncle, go ahead and finish up. No, I was just going to agree. That sounds good. I just wanted to ask real quick, why is the Periscope so buggy when I am so amazed at the high quality you work uh, you've done on the wheels and the buttons that are already rotating for every player. So some of them still need work, but the ones that work, I'm just amazed that you could do it so well and so easily uh, between different submarines. If I turn, you know, something on my sub in a certain direction, the other sub can literally, you know, see that. And, you know, why was the periscope so difficult? <laughs> what's, the, what's the problem with the periscope? <laughs> Uh, the fact that you said you had it raising and lowering, but now it doesn't because it was buggy. So all these other things work great. Uh, Einar, or sorry, Einar, your your microphone. Uh, no, no, no. I, I was okay. just, uh, I, I got your question. Um, okay. Oscar, answer. Yeah. Um, so, um, no, no. It, it, I mean, it wasn't extremely difficult. It was um, just a thing, some things that weren't working with it and uh, as, as the day that we chose to release um, got closer and closer, we removed sort of features that um, were interesting but not necessary for the game. So it's not uh, it, it, I mean, in the, making the periscope go up and down. It's not a, like really difficult. It's just that it didn't work at the time, so we chose chose to not in, include it. Understood. Okay, Leo's got a light on. Uh, yeah, actually, this goes back to the previous um, topic about the surface playable surface ships. Um, what I was thinking is you said it would be very labor-intensive to implement playable surface ships. 
Um, I was toying with the idea, actually, is um, I'm not sure if you ever heard of Arma, but they have a mode. Uh, I think it's called like the Zeus mode or something like that. But basically where you have a single player actually control the uh, opposition force, where instead of having, say, crewable destroyers, you could, say, theoretically maybe have one player uh, control the convoy, maybe in it. I guess maybe like an RTS style. I guess that if maybe that I could understand if that's out of scope, but that could, yeah, like uh, yeah, like uh, Renekow was saying, like a game master position where I could see, I in theory it would be easier to implement than a full on playable ship. You could command the task force in a sense from uh, maybe like a bird's eye view, or I guess however you see fit. But uh, what do you think of something like that? Yeah, um, again, that's a very interesting idea, but in both these cases, what, uh, what I meant by, um, by developing, like, it takes a lot of time, it's not, it's not, just, um, it's not just implementing the thing, um, it's User mostly, like, timed out. M- much of the time that we spend um, developing is actually by, like, prototyping trying to figure out how stuff is going to work. So um, both of these uh, suggestions, both like having playable planes and destroyers and so on, and having some kind of game master uh, or RTS type of role would be uh, very difficult to make because this is basically something that there's no, there's no standard. Uh, we'd have to invent it from scratch, and that takes a lot of time because you experiment, you build something, and then that that thing isn't very good, and then you rebuild it and rebuild it, and so on. So, um, if you just had, if if we just had um, like um, a blueprint of how it would work, then sure, then we could make it really fast. But if we have to um, experiment a lot and build it from scratch, that takes so much time like you, you have no idea like it's it's just crazy right yeah i understand that i can see how you can get bogged down in trying to do something like that you lose out on you know everything else you're trying to do as well i, I understand that i also wanted to say that most of the people on this team speak server right now have put in many hours assisting in testing the game and supplying bug reports to me, which I've condensed into one big email, and then I've sent those to Oscar. I wonder if Oscar and Anar are open to having some people uh, submit their ideas and their prototyping and their blueprints. You know, if they could put together something, are, are they interested in receiving that and using those ideas? So that's something to think about. Yeah, um, again, we're probably going to use forums for that uh, rather than email because email, uh, first of all, you can get the same like suggestion many times without the, the person suggesting them knowing about it. Um, like you, you could you could have uh, common suggestions and common uh, bugs that, that people uh, many people have reported and so on. So we'll, we'll set up forums for that. Uh, I think it's better than email. And a follow-up to that is um, I think I should wait on creating a form that says, here's all the bugs we found so far, because I think you're going to have a lot of those fixed on the next release. So it'd be, it'd be too soon for me to put it together now after weeks of testing. Uh, I'm wondering what your timeline is. If we get a new patch, should I immediately put a form together and then just start saying, hey, put your bug here, and that way the other people won't put a duplicate of that same bug in there, and it'll save you more time. Is that something you want to look forward to doing or do you want us to put a form together now for the bugs we've already found um i think we'll probably want to put a form together like now because um as i said i don't i don't really know when the next version is going to be out it's um (laughs) it's really hard to to say okay all right yeah we'll do that we'll take all the knowledge that we have and we'll try to condense it into like a readme file that says here's the known bugs and of course uh Anar and Oscar can come in and, and correct that at any time, or they can send me an email and I can edit it and correct it. But, uh, yeah, we'd like to help you stay organized, and I'm sure there's a lot of players here that would like to also help you by help, uh, giving you the ideas to make a game that's never been made before. So we're breaking new ground, like Captain Picard says, we're going where no man has gone before, or Star Trek says that. So uh, hit your light if you guys have any questions. We've Talk chemical, go ahead. 
So basically, um, in-game voice over IP. Can, can you, do you guys think about putting that in so we can use in-game to talk between ourselves and to the crew? Yes, uh, definitely. I mean, I've been looking, I've been reading the whole, no, not the whole, but large part of parts of the Steam API uh, now. And uh, uh, that's actually, that seems to be a very trivial thing to do. Uh, so definitely, I mean, we'll, we'll be adding uh, a chat as well so you can type but uh, voice over IP is, is definitely a high priority for us um, once we get like uh, other stuff working with Steam. Um, I also thought about um, like it would be a fun idea if if you could. I mean, you could uh, attenuate the voice in the game if you wanted to, so you could have it um, like if, if you you could hear where the, where the voice is voice. coming from. Uncle Neil, you have a question. No, sorry. I was control C, control V again. Okay, so there's a question coming in from Joran now on the PM, and uh, he wants to know if the the current hydrophone sounds. So you say you're listening to a destroyer, and you can hear his propellers. Will those sounds change uh, to slow down when the destroyer slows down, and uh, be able to count the revolutions and use advanced uh, techniques for being a, a good sonar operator to determine his speed based on the variable sound? Are the are the future, or I should say this, is the future of the game going to give us variable sounds for propellers? Yes. So it'll depend on the speed of the enemy ship, whether it's a destroyer or transport, and we might be able to uh, detect their speed by counting RPMs. Okay, Tech has another yeah. question. Uh, so Tech says, um, can we get some aesthetic things or uh, some you know graphically designed uh, things like a dive alarm, or uh, aesthetic things uh, to a uh, toggle to toggle the red lighting for nighttime. So yeah, he's interested in alarm. So when we dive, it should say you know auga or something like that, right? Dive, dive. So what did the Swedish submarines have for sound effects? Sound effects. I have no idea what the Swedish sound um, like Swedish submarines had for sound effects actually, uh, but that would be um, interesting. Um, to have um, different sounds. I know the, the red light thing we have been thinking about, uh, and also like to be able to turn off, um, turn off the light and turn off uh, equipment to save power and such. That would be interesting. Yeah, so, that that kind of um, that kind of polish is going to be done when we have time. Absolutely, there are a lot of a lot of details like that that will really enhance the experience of the game. So. Yeah, we are taking that into serious consideration, of course. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is, um, sorry, um, th these are still like Polish things. Um, these are things that we, we would add at a much later state in development when like all the systems are in place and all, probably all the levels as well. Uh, so this, this is not something that we will be adding soon. This is a sort, sort of the last month maybe thing that you'd add. Right. If I remember correctly, the last time you guys came on the uh, TeamSpeak, uh, you mentioned that the interior lighting is all baked in and there's no single light switch to change it. So you would have to create more textures. And uh, you did say that the interior of the sub is going to really look a lot better because it's all pretty much placeholder. All all the graphics are placeholder right now. So Yeah, pretty uh, much, yeah. So, devs, um, before we ask any more questions, I know we've we've grilled you to death, like you're on the stand at a murder trial here or something. So, I'd like to know if you have any um, other comments that, uh, after all these questions so far, has have we made you think of anything else that's new or interesting that you'd like to add? Do you have any topics that you want to bring up or ask us? Because we are here to help you and play the game and test the game and give you our feedback, and we'll be doing that in the forums. But is there anything that you can think of that you'd like to ask us? Hmm. Um, I don't know. Um... Well, I mean, we uh, we have gotten a lot, lots and lots of very useful information, and it's it's so much that it's hard to hard to pick uh but 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 yeah absolutely i mean um, we're probably going to come up with a lot more as well and, and we will have a very uh have we'll have um a a, a live um conversation with you, with you guys all the time but yeah we we have definitely learned a lot of stuff by talking to you 
just even just um today. Very good. Yeah. So um if anyone has any last uh questions about the submarine world, if not the there were a few people who asked me if they could open up the uh question session to some more general type topics, but let's get the last of the submarine simulation questions out of the way. Is there anybody that has a question for the devs? Chemical, go ahead. So would you, uh, is the plan to implement uh, dynamic weather in a game? Um, yes, I mean, again, if, if we have the time to, it's one of those things that would be really cool, like a day-night cycle and uh, dynamic weather and so on. It would be really uh, awesome if we, if we could have the time to do that. But it's, it's I mean, it's just, um, it would be an aesthetic. Um, it wouldn't be something that uh, actually um, affect the gameplay that much, probably. Um, so, it, again, it's, it's a matter of prioritizing. Uh... Yeah, but also, like, um, well, there's a lot of things we can do with the weather that... Uh, that are really really interesting, like adding uh, you know blizzards and fog and rain and all that kind of stuff, and and that's also sort of a polish thing um, that comes in later in development. But yeah, absolutely, it's we are considering all the time. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I guess what you meant by dynamic weather is weather that changes during as as the level progresses or something. Yeah, right? pretty much, and uh, we could use it uh, to sneak up on convoy and sink ships, stuff like that. Yeah. I wanna... Go ahead, Oscar. Yeah, uh, so uh, we'll probably, at least at the start, we'll have a fixed weather condition and lighting for a specific level uh, that won't change, but maybe we'll add uh, changing weather, depending a little bit on how much time it takes to implement. Uh, but, but the weather, I mean... Um, if if we add lots and lots of fog, or if it's night in a level, that will affect the gameplay. So that's uh, an, an important factor. Like you, the radar would be much more useful, and the periscope would be almost useless if it's very foggy or very dark, for instance. Yeah, or raining and storming. So I just wanted to say the fog on the water right now is uh, very interesting to look at. It's it's actually better than some other games that I've seen. So I've appreciated the fact that there is some moving fog. It's really cool. Thanks. We made it in like five minutes. <laughs> uh, don't say that. You're going to put this uh, TeamSpeak uh, audio session up on your Kickstarter to generate more excitement. So you got to be careful what secrets you give away. <laughs> <laughs> and so anybody else have a question? So I think Leo was asking something about uh, Swedish TV shows earlier. Leo, you that, still That there? was me. Oh, quack. Go ahead. Yeah, so I've been trying to learn Swedish even before I heard about your uh, game. So I was figuring I'd ask you if you um, had any Swedish TV shows or movies that I could watch to practice my Swedish that I would be able to get in America. Um, <laughs> we don't really watch TV. Um... Okay. Um, 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 well, let me think. It's it's a bit like it's a bit uh, like unexpected question uh, but, yeah <laughs> but yeah well um but may, i i get i'll get back to you if i if i think of something okay fair enough. i have a very important question okay uh Renica, go ahead what's your guys favorite flavor of ice cream <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't really eat uh, eat ice cream that much, but uh, what about yeah. the beer. Beer is uh, well, I like uh, Trappist, like Belgian Belgian beer, and also stouts and uh, porters. So they serve Belgian beer on the Marulkin, I. Eh? <laughs> no, no, on on Marulkin they serve Pilsner. Okay, Pilsner. Yeah, so if you don't have a TV show, Quacks, you can, uh, I recommend you check out the uh, Rosetta Stone for your la language learning uh, experience there. So I do have a question about the Enigma device, um, and I know you've already told me the answer to this, but I'll ask it for the general crowd. So I'm an American. I don't speak German. Um, I don't have the time to go and learn it so I can translate those messages. Some of the players that will come on here are very kind to do that for me so we know where each ship is. And I think we talked about localization earlier, but um, 
Yeah, so is there something you'll be able to do? Uh, can you flip a switch at the beginning of the game that says, just make all the German languages, you know, still encrypted, but encrypted in English? What do you say about that? Yeah, so that's uh, an another thing that should be on the, like, hard mode versus casual mode thing. If, if we do manage to get localization um, going, uh, we th th it should definitely be so that if you are playing casually, you should have it in your native language language and if you're playing hardcore you should have it in the real like proper language that it should be um and also about the enigma machine people have pointed out or not many people actually but some people have pointed out that it's not a correct enigma machine and that's <laughs> that is uh, true it's um it's just a um it's just a substitution cipher at the moment the real enigma machine should have a sliding uh, it should be a sliding puzzle so it should be like the, the code should change every time you type a letter. So the same letter is not translated to the same thing twice. But um, the oh, reason... Go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the reason we, we uh, chose um, to, uh, to to not do, do a correct Enigma machine is not because it's uh, difficult to model. It's actually fairly simplistic to model it once you have a computer. Uh, it's, it's more the fact that you should be able to... Um, you should be able to um, to decrypt the code in 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 multiplayer. So if, if someone is typing something, you should be able to like using using uh, simple uh, frequency analysis. You should be able to to um, decrypt their messages and find out where they are. That's a, that, that sort of thing. But if if it was a real enigma machine, you couldn't do it unless you're you're really smart. So uh, here's a related question on the submarine channel. The bottom radio is used for sub-to-sub -sub communications, and we have done a lot of multiplayer. So we've had seven submarines on one day. We had five on another. Each one had a single player. But uh, for today, we've had two submarines with three and four men each. So the question is, is in different situations, we have only one channel to communicate to all the other subs. But if I'm communicating to one sub and there's two other subs out there that want to communicate to each other, would you be able to put in secondary uh, I, I, let me re let me rephrase that. I guess they could just change channels, but if I try to then tell them to come back to my channel, they can't receive. So can they have two radios, one for receiving and one for sending? That's an interesting question. Um, so I guess in real life you'd have a command central that you'd call into, and they would do the, the routing part, like the, if if you if you get by me. Um, oh, oh, okay, okay. So I kind of, I kind of get it. So here's uh, just a suggestion for all the people who come to your uh, teams, you know, your forums and your Kickstarter page and listen to this audio. What we've done, and while we're playing the game, is before we start the game, we make an agreement that our sub designation is zero zero one and zero zero two. So we'll start typing. Zero zero one says we are located here. Then zero zero two will type this is zero zero two and we are located there. So they start every message with zero zero one space, what is your position? So they always give us their designation. So is there a method, uh, other than players just making up their own method, that you would suggest that we should use to make it more realistic in the radio communications area? Um, so the, the fact that each uh, submarine has um, a name is, is, of course, I think, realistic. Um, but uh, it would be... It would be good if, if uh, when you make the, like in the lobby, that, that the name would be designated so everyone knows who everyone is, uh, like before, so you don't have to discuss that player to player. Mm, yeah, so there's no way to actually see the name of the other player on the map, and the map is not totally working right now. So if we need to remember, hey, you know, this sub is called Triton and that sub is called Guppy, I could say Triton to Guppy, or maybe I could click on the map to start a radio signal. The other thing is, is when I'm typing my message, I can't see on the screen what I'm typing, and I might have made an error, and I might want to correct it, but I wouldn't know it. So could we get a ticker tape that shows what we're actually sending and not just receiving? Um, yeah, sh I guess you could do that, yeah. Um, That's probably uh, a longer term priority, but I just wanted to throw it out there. <laughs> yeah, at least for the casual mode. For the real hardcore mode, I don't want to have uh, um, any kind of visual. <laughs> I <laughs> like, got you. You, you, you just yeah, have to listen. Right, okay, sounds good. So, um, anyone else have a, uh, any further questions? Quacks, go ahead. 
Uh, so I was just reading on the um, on your website about how you originally had developed it as a university final project, and it was a little like 2D game. Uh, and then from there, you developed it further. So I was curious if there was any chance that you guys would consider releasing that original version for people to look at and see what it sort of started as. Um, well, the the original version is kind of crap. <laughs> well, it's still good to see how it started. Yeah, I guess we should. Well, I mean, we have um, we have video of it, and I ah. have the file still, but. Someday that'll be a valuable addition to the Silicon Valley Game Museum because right now they still have <laughs> they still have Atari computers from 1980 out there in California in that museum. So it's well, for game I'm, development historical accuracy. Go ahead. I mean, um, we didn't actually develop anything that was strictly 2D. Um, the, the the only thing that we did develop uh, ended up being uh, 3D. So so uh, the 2D thing was more of an idea than an actual oh, okay. implementation. Yes, but but um, um, as you might know, the uh, you were locked to your station and you didn't have a free camera look original ver- version. Then we added uh, the ability to move around, move the camera and look around, and then we added the ability to walk around on the submarine. So it has been a long process from what we had at first and what we have now. So uh, another thing I noticed is that when we fire the torpedo, if we look down through the periscope at the front and yell, you know, fire now, we see a little white dot moving quickly out on the surface of the water. It's not a full 3D torpedo, is it? Well, I'm not sure if you were aware. We are, we are able to see something move out of the sub very quickly. Uh, I think uh, that's my test torpedo model <laughs> that I made. It's It's white, and I think it's mostly a cylinder. Uh, Roger, okay. I was kind of wondering what that was. Uh, Renekow, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so I don't know if you guys have uh, been browsing the subsim forms, but I did make a post, and I made some code books in Google Docs, and I made a couple suggestions, like, for PvP, if you got teams of two or more subs, uh, when they communicate with their radios, they could, like, have you thought about limiting or... For, um, oh boy, I don't know how to put this. For like specific uh, PvP matches, like a PvP mode where maybe you can only use wheel positions like 0 through 3, for example, on the Enigma, to give teams like a chance of decoding the other team's message, you know, before they change their codes. I don't know. You could decode it manually without the machine, actually. It's not that difficult. Right, right. Um, But I mean, if you use all 0 through 9, like it's going to take a long time. To find to decode, you know, a word. Or no, I don't mean like that. You just like with pen and paper, you write down the message, and then you like using frequency analysis, you can can get the the correct answer. Yeah, but but that's that's not as easy if players are sending the messages themselves. It's AI is sending the message. I mean, depends on how good you are you are at uh, decrypting, I guess. But, uh, I mean, if they're typing in the same language, if you know the language, then, then it's not that difficult, I think. But uh, but I've, I've seen the po- uh, your post, uh, your thread about the codebooks, and they are really cool. I haven't had time to look into it uh, very much, but, but yeah, it's, it's really definitely looking. All okay, right, cool. so, yeah, I'm not sure if anybody asked the question about the steering wheel, but is the dead zone too large on the steering wheel currently? Um, I don't know, I guess, maybe. <laughs> so, like, I turn the wheel, it almost goes 180 degrees to the left before it clunks, and then that clunking nose lets me no- noise that lets me know that the rudder engaged. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, I added that pretty late uh, in development, or pretty late, like, before we're, we're, we're going to release uh, the demo, so uh, most of the, those things aren't really balanced at all. Um, Hmm. So if you decide to add joystick controls where you're putting in your X and Y axis or you're putting in keyboard commands to raise and lower the periscope or even steer the wheel, you might put in a slider for sensitivity. So say you hold down the button or move the joystick for one second, you'll get a certain speed on the wheel. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Yeah. So um, how do you guys feel about um, maneuvering the sub? 
So if you're, I don't know how you have played, but uh, Maxim, you, you spoke about uh, several subs and you have, have done like six or seven subs. And uh, how do you feel about being three sub? Does that work out good or is it, uh, is it really hard? Okay, so one part of your uh, voice broke up there. You said, how do I feel about three crew members? Uh, th- uh, yeah, three three crew Okay, three crew members. Um, so I think right now the general idea, everyone would wish to have more players online. And if we could always have four players, that'd be good. Because in a certain situation, four players are all very busy. And uh, so, I, I mean, I like the fact that we can have up to four. Some people want more than that because they don't want to run the sub with just a few people. They think it's too hard right now. Yeah. Does that answer your question, or were you asking a different uh, yeah, yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. Can I add to that, uh, Max? Yeah, go ahead, Renico. So, you know, myself personally, I would like to have uh, – see, if I got four people and say I'm the captain, um, that's that feels like it's just enough for me. Um, because doing things like surfacing and then reconfiguring the propulsion, um, I want to send somebody to the back to help out with that. And so, like, four seems like the minimum. I think five would be great, uh, in my personal opinion, um, because I, I, my gameplay style is I like to have, you know, maybe, maybe double up on roll, maybe have somebody in the radio room on the Enigma and on Sonar, and also uh, with pen and paper creating encrypted messages and decrypting them messages. like it goes a lot smoother with two people. Yeah, um, we're thinking about adding a fifth uh, player, um, especially uh, as uh, chemical killer uh, types. Um, if if we, we um, add a um, torpedo room, then, then a fifth player might be necessary. Um, well. Oh, and you also said you might implement the navigator table, which will take somebody away from the radio shack if they're in the radio shack. So I really think you should open up your game to where you can have six people join a sub. I think that might be the new minimum. Yeah, that would be interesting. I mean, um, especially if you could play, again, with with AI crew members. So you wouldn't have to be six, but uh, you could. That that would be probably the, the ultimate solution. A, a clarification on the AI player avatars. So if I'm walking around the ship, will they also walk around from time to time or just stay at their station? And the other part of the question is, if um, I'm in one sub and I have one or two real players, will there be a mixture of other AI players that fill the other spots and the same thing happening on the next sub that joins my world? So can every sub have a mixture of crew? Or if it's is this going to be a single player only feature? No, no, the the idea is um, is that there is no like dedicated single player mode. You you can like um, you can choose to mix and match with uh, the number of uh, AI crew members and real crew members. Yeah, the plan is also to make uh, the AI characters around as you command them, so they won't be locked to a. Ah, so now I have a more advanced question. I hope you're ready. So let's say I spawn into the world. I've got two real players, and the AI fills the other locations. If one of the players has to leave to go to work and he can't play anymore, he gets out of the sub, he exits the game, will a new AI player pop into the world and fill his spot? That's the idea. So um, any player spot not taken it will be controlled by the AI. So in other words, AI players will actually disappear when new humans join your sub and vice versa. No, you probably control the same avatar, so it won't, like, pop out. Well, no, let me give you a different example. Let's say Joe, Mike, and John are playing in the sub, and there are two more positions, so there's AI1 and AI2. John leaves, AI3 shows up instantly and takes his place. Yeah. Okay, now if John comes back, AI3 exits the sub, so there's only two AI walking around or doing their jobs. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so so the AI will come and go whenever the spots are not taken. Got it. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, anyone else have a question? Quacks, you're up next. All right, so uh, I got to get off pretty soon, so just, just a quick question. Um, at the moment, do you have any sort of code to uh, prevent the player from going too far off the map? Because right now I'm about 10,000 10, miles east of the uh, map border, and it's not stopping me yet. 
<laughs> no, there's nothing to prevent you from going off the map at the moment. Uh, we're still okay. uh, thinking about that, uh, like how, how to solve that in a, in a good way. Uh, One, um, sorry, sorry, Wax, I actually tested that theory and we discovered that the world really is flat. So we drove off the map, we sent the bug report to the devs. But um, I would say if we hit the edge of the map, um, the devs could put in a little message saying, you know, if you uh, continue on your course for one minute more, you will exit the game world and you are surrendering. Something, something to that effect. Uh, one method that I've seen in a couple games is that actually, they if you reach the edge, it stops you from actually moving any farther out, but it doesn't make you realize that it stopped. So you're still going at, say, if you were going 30 knots, you would still be going at 30 knots as far as the sub is concerned and as far as, like, everything is concerned for sound and everything like that. But you're not getting any farther outside of the map. You know, that would also leave a trail so that you could follow to get back home because currently the map keeps your trail on the map the entire time. So from the very start of the game to the end of the game, you see all the twists and turns. But will there be a point in time where we can delete that trail on the map? Oh, yeah. Um, so once you have manual navigation going, um, you could probably, I mean, you should be able to pretty much uh, edit the map as you please. Yeah, can I say something about uh, the manual navigation? What kind of tools are we going to have to actually track the submarine? Oh, um, we already covered that, I think. But yeah, we'll have a... Um, a um, what's it called? A odometer, so you know how far you've traveled, and you'll have um, various like measurement tools for the map, and you could um, you could look at um, land formations and so on, and measure the angles, so you could uh, get a fix that way. Uh, and I've also been thinking about adding um, what's it called a sextant. Okay. Okay. Uh, pro, uh, a protractor was suggested by Rentacal. Yeah. Another uh, another thing worth mentioning about the manual navigation for each every player to mark put mark markings on the map to uh, point out ships and uh, other kinds of maybe maybe mines or other kinds of. Well, okay, good time. good point. Um, yeah, I had I'd asked the devs uh, sometime during the last week if there will be both friendly mines that can be planted. Uh, or just enemy mines. Um, Bye, Quack. Or yeah, so... <laughs> um, so, um, about mines. Uh, User disconnected from your there, there will... Um, we haven't planned on, on um, having, like, player-controllable mines, so you, you shouldn't, like, we haven't planned on... on uh, letting out mines behind the submarine but we have planned on and having levels where there are mines in the level that you have to avoid user in your channel time uh, out. and then you could have both um if, if you're on friendly waters you know where the mines are and if you're on in enemy waters you just know that somewhere here there's a minefield don't go there hmm. interesting so i wonder if the ai controlled destroyers might use that to their advantage to get us off their tail so to speak yeah, that that would be um, interesting and not too difficult to implement, I believe. Okay, well, we are now coming up on one hour and 45 minutes or one hour and 50 minutes. These guys have been answering questions, and uh, I don't want to keep them too long. So, uh, again, we're just, well, we have one new player coming in. Let's just User see if he has a quick question. Is recording. Uh, Johnny Wayne, do you copy? I copy. We were just about to tell the developers that we've kept them here for almost two hours and uh, we we're going to try to wrap up. You just arrived, so do you have any important questions you'd like to ask about the Marulkin game? HMS Marulkin. Uh, hold on one second. My sound is in the uh, par. Give me one second to uh, adjust right. and then I'll come back and you can answer my question, cast my question. Right. No problem. So before we, um, like I said, wrap it up, is if the devs have um, anything else they want to add or anybody else has a question, push your blue light. Chemical, go ahead. The last question, I promise. Um, can you make it so everyone can see markings on the map? So, for instance, if I track a submarine, I mean, a target as a captain, can other players in the game see what I'm doing? Yes, that's the plan. That's uh, some point, something that we plan on implementing uh, as soon as possible. But because that would be uh, extremely helpful 
to have synchronized um, stuff that you can put on the map. All right. Thank you. Okay. Can you copy me? Yes. yes, Johnny. If you have a question, go ahead. Is there uh, the developers here? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, first off, I want to say it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing how this game is going to continue to improve, but it's great the way it is so far. A couple things I'd like to add, or first thing and foremost I'd like to add is I think there would be very helpful uh, if there could be uh, uh, compass directions on the actual periscope. They covered that question. Yes, there will be soon. Next question, Johnny. <laughs> you I'm trying to think your... of my next question. Okay. Hold you on. want to hear their answer directly? Because I just wanted to save time. That's okay. Uh, you, you answer my question. Right. You'll be able to listen to this TeamSpeak recording. It's going to go up on their uh, many different web pages. So SubSim, Kickstarter, it's going to go everywhere for promotion, and you'll be able to listen to the entire recording. So anybody else uh, have a question? Blue light. I'm getting a PM. No, that's Leo. Leo, you have any question? Oh, no, that was just the uh, general chat. General My chat. second okay. question was, are you going to expand this? This is probably down the road, but are you going to expand this to include different types of, uh, I guess, different game modes where, you know, we can have a team of people where they're defending the shoreline or uh, you're going after one person, you're doing a hunt, or different different game modes where you can play multiplayer? Yes. Yeah, uh, we're, we're adding um, player versus player mode um, as soon as we can. And you can actually already play with several submarines, so you could actually join the game uh, in the campaign right now and play as many as you want. So yes, you can sink another submarine with your torpedo currently. Well, I'm guessing what my question is, are you looking as far forward as possibly including game modes such as uh, you know, a capture the flag, or uh, everyone versus uh, you know hunting one sub, or defending uh, a certain area. Something yeah, like that. that's that's the sort of uh, player versus player game modes we want to add. I mean, just straight up um, PvP would be pretty boring because uh, everyone would would just stand still and wait until the other person moved. You wouldn't have like you have to have objectives, otherwise the PvP won't work. So. Um, we have been thinking about various uh, types of player versus player, player uh, objective game, game modes. I'd really like to fly the biplanes to force those submarines down under and strafe them and drop depth charges. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, one day maybe. <laughs> right, right, right. So we might have to have little runways off on the coast somewhere where the planes have to go back and refuel occasionally. So... Um, yeah, we noticed um, another little thing is that there's that diesel generator in the back room, but there's no fuel gauge for it. So it seems like even if, uh, and we also ran our batteries completely to zero when we were on the ocean floor, we rose up and then we started engine. So even though we had no main batteries, so there must be like a mystery fuel gauge for the generator and a mystery backup battery somewhere. Yeah, it's all run by magic. Um, basically, you, right now you have infinite ammunition for the Deccan, infinite um, fuel for the uh, generators, and also um, infinite torpedoes. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that, that's uh, magical about this submarine. Uh, yep. <laughs> that gives us a lot of opportunity to get those training shots in. Yeah. Yeah, but this will probably be tweaked for long. So, if we're allowed to keep the original version of the game on our hard drive, we can reload it up anytime and just play that. If Even if the new ver version comes out and it's so much better, this one has infinite weapons or ammo. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right, well, I want to just say, you know, I think we've uh, put enough time into tonight's session, and I'm hoping we have as many people or double as I mean, if we have twice as many people, uh, we're going to have to be prepared for more uh, time. We're going to need more time to answer everybody's questions next week or two weeks from now. And I want to thank everybody for showing up, especially the devs for all their hard work and uh, Uncle Neil for hosting everything and recording the session as a backup. So uh, we'll uh, put this uh, audio file up on a Dropbox uh, very quickly tonight so anyone can download it and have it to start promoting to their favorite websites of their choice. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Great, really. Yeah, thanks. Thank uh, you. Thank you. You guys have been working like crazy on this, I can tell. Yeah, we have. We have.
Hey, we you know, can, can I ask you a question uh, since you're here, or the developer since you're here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so, are you also thinking about maybe doing a, a sort of damage to the sub? For example, if water can rush into the sub and you can see your teammates uh, drowning or or explode, you know, things inside the sub, not just uh, a death. So we already uh, covered that as well. And yes, if we have the time to do it, we'll definitely do it. Uh, it's it's um, we know how to. It's just a matter of prioritizing doing that instead of prioritizing doing something else. Got it. Understood. I know you guys are going to do a lot of amazing things with this. It's already turning out great. Thank you. He just wants to lock me in a flooding compartment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I have to mention something that's happening on the text chat down below. People are now saying that if you run out of battery power, you're a lousy captain and your penalty should be the backup foot pedals to propel your sub back to base to get refueled. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Also, I, I noticed there's uh, there's no shitter in the uh, in the sub. That Watch might be a language, problem. Johnny. Watch your language. We're gonna have to edit that out. Okay. So anyone who would like to remain, I'll be hosting another game, and we can have as many subs as we want to get out there on the water. And again, I'd like to say good night to those who are logging off, and thanks very much for showing up. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, hopefully, we're uh, we will hear from you soon. Um, at the next uh, Q&A session and also at the end of the session.